Today we have a special guest, it is Dave Feldman and for some of you that have been following our channel for quite a while you would have seen Dave Feldman in two prior videos. We'll talk about those in just a second. David is a software engineer and has just given a great presentation on the low carb cruise and there were two key points that I wanted Dave to go over with you today. Um, this presentation or this uh, interview is going to be specifically relating to cholesterol and the myths, the myths that exist. So um, just to quickly talk about the two videos and, and how we, we got to know each other. So Dave actually did an N equals 1 experiment where he, for a period of time, I'll let him just give the, the history of this, he ate certain foods, certain fats and oils and was able to manipulate his LDL and his cholesterol numbers and um, that led on to his latest experiments, N equals 1 experiment, which is just absolutely incredible. And um, both those videos that we're speaking about that have been on our channels, we will put underneath uh, uh, in two links, so you're able to just go onto those videos and watch them. Do you want to just give a two second recap of those videos of what you did? Uh, sure, I believe in the first video I kind of talk a little bit about the basics of cholesterol and sort of how it moves around in the body. And I think in the second video, um, I talked about the importance of uh, logging your food, which I do think is something I, I encourage a lot of people to be able to do, kind of how to take it to the next level, to actually get into where you can take pictures of your food like I do. I, I've actually lived that way for like the last three years, and I find it's very helpful in being able to kind of audit, you know, what's happened before and uh, to better understand what it is you're doing yourself. So with regards to manipulating the way you ate, just give us a quick synopsis of, of what, what that resulted in. With this last experiment? No, with the, no. With the first one. Oh, with the first one. Yeah. Well, uh, I found out very early on in my research that um, you could very easily move your cholesterol numbers up and down. Surprisingly, by having more fat, you bring it low. And by having less fat, you bring it high. Your total and LDL cholesterol. Okay. And how, uh, what period of time? It actually, it's about three days is the, is the magic window for the shortest term turnaround. And what is, the, what is the difference in the numbers? So what is the lowest and what is the highest that you can do within a short period of time? Oh gosh, uh, the last big experiment that I did um, was in December and my LDL, I would moved from 207 to 103 in seven days. Wow. Okay, so that's quite substantial. Now, um, a lot of you that are watching the video uh, may be considering going on a low-carb or ketogenic diet, but are uh, in fear that it's going to raise your cholesterol and this ha somehow is going to be bad for you. We've been drummed into our head that um, having a high cholesterol is bad. There's bad cholesterol like LDL and there's good cholesterol like HDL. And really the fact is... Um, you know, we, we're very lucky that we've got some very, very smart doctors and very smart engineers that's been able to break this down. And actually, uh, a lot of it is not exactly what it seems. So, um, one of the things that you mentioned yesterday in your presentation, which I found very interesting, is that there, you have not found a study yet that shows that somebody with a high LDL, which is now considered the bad thing, along with a high HDL, which is considered the good cholesterol, um, as well as a low triglyceride that had any cardiovascular risk. Is that correct? Or am I saying it correctly? If you want to elaborate? I wouldn't say any cardiovascular risk. So let me go ahead and kind of break it down a little bit. If you get a standard lipid panel today, you typically get four values. You get total cholesterol, you get LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, and triglycerides. Okay. Now, it is true, for many people who go on a low-carb diet, they'll see their total and their LDL cholesterol increase. Most people, though, will also see their HDL increase, the so-called good cholesterol, and they'll see their triglycerides drop. And that's actually, triglycerides are a measure of the fat that's in your blood. Okay. And it gets moved around by these things that are part of what's considered the good and bad cholesterol. Now, very early on, I realized that there wasn't seemingly a lot of studies that really break out that particular group. Not even for people who are specifically low carbers, but there, there are even you know vegetarians and uh, people in the Mediterranean diet who also will have high, LD, high HDL cholesterol and low triglycerides, and they seem to be doing extremely well. And so more and more I got to the point where I just started asking Twitter, and I've now been fortunate that I have enough followers on Twitter, uh, some of them who are dying to prove me wrong on things, that I've said, look, it just, can you give me just one study, one study that shows people 
who have low triglycerides, have high HDL cholesterol, but also have high LDL cholesterol or having high rates of cardiovascular disease. And I can tell you as of right now, it's, I want to say it's about three and a half months later, I've not had one study that's met that criteria. Not one study. Okay. And it's stunning to me because that's such a commonality with everybody who goes, not everybody, but most people that go on a low-carb, high-fat diet. So it's stunning to me as well, and which is why this important getting it, this information, getting it out there is so important to us. So the, the second part of what um, I was astounded at is that you have now completed your second N equals 1 experiment. All these have been done. Not, on your, not you know, second. Is, not the second? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, the I second don't. that I know of. The oh. second that I know of. Oh. Okay. You should visit my site more often. I'm I, going to. I'm going I have to. something in the neighborhood of, I want to say, 40 five or fifty something like that oh, wow. one experiment. So at the end of the presentation we're gonna give uh, just give uh, folks a, a link to your you know just tell them sure. what, the, what the website is so they can get it get to it. But let's talk about that study that you recently you've I, I believe you've just completed is that yes, right? Correct. Now that is comparing over a is it a three week or six week? Well technically the entire experiment is something close to maybe six weeks. But it was three weeks on the one diet, three weeks in the other diet? About, yeah, about three and a half weeks on the first diet. Okay. So that was, um, you went and followed the guidelines of the standard American diet. Um, for three weeks, you, uh, if I understand correctly, you made sure that your sleep was pretty much the same, your exercise levels was pretty much yes. the same, and all the the only thing that changed was that you went on the standard American diet, you then went to the battery of tests, and got the results. Mm -hmm. You then switched over and went onto a keto, a low carb type of diet, and um, then at the end of that, you got the results. Give yeah. us a brief um, synopsis of what happened there. Well, definitely the intent was I, I knew at the time that I was going on a more typical standard American diet that I would likely gain weight. And to be sure, I did intentionally have it at a higher caloric load than I think they would have recommended. I was at around 4,200 calories, okay. roughly. And sure enough, I did. I actually gained weight. I was seeking to gain weight close to or even exceeding what it was before I went on a ketogenic diet. And I really want to emphasize something real quick, Glenn. There's a lot of people who follow my work, and they get excited about the experiments that I do, and some of them even emulate them. This is one I want no one to emulate. Okay. Because in order to gain weight this quickly, I had to induce a state of hyperinsulinemia that's you know just eating enough of the carbs that your insulin gets high enough and therefore more of fat is stored because it's a storage it's a growth and storage hormone right. um, that carries some risks but the risks that I personally have determined that I was going to assume for this experiment I was aware of them but I do have an advantage a lot of people don't in that I have such a battery of tests preceding this that I had some really good data to go with so I wanted to answer one of the key questions which was does your cholesterol get affected when you go from a high uh, calorie standard American diet to keto and you're starting to observe your weight change. Does losing weight bring up your cholesterol? And I was excited to find that sure enough, in this experiment, it definitely did. And I'm actually not even, uh, I haven't even blog posted about this yet, so you may actually be breaking the news before okay. I've even had a chance to break it there. But needless to say, uh, it was quite exciting because I did it in a very controlled manner. The last five days of my standard American diet was exactly the same food every day. And per what you said, I tried to keep the sleep the same, the exercise the same. And then I went for 12 days on this keto diet that also was exactly the same every single day. It was, I want to say 2,400 calories, but it's very standard in many respects. It was very high fat, very low carb. And so you know that the only major variable that had been changing was my weight. As my weight went down, my uh, ketones, of course, rose. A whole lot of other neat things changed, for which I got a lot of data all along the way. I got a total of, I want to say, five DEXA scans. I got my uh, RMR. Um, I got about 21 different blood labs at several points, including the switch off between. And so all of that data, I think, will be very useful to the community, and I'm very excited to see what it's going to look like. So what we're going to do is we are going to have you back on Adapt Live, and those videos, as everyone knows, goes onto our YouTube channel, and that's going to be dedicated to that study that you did to yourself, along with the slides, along with all the labs and the uh, you know and everything else that goes along with it. So please keep um, you know, tabs on on the dates when that'll be shown. Uh, we excited to have you on again, and um, just give us your website where people can go on to quickly. Sure. Yeah, you can go to cholesterolcode.com, and uh, of course I'm also very active on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter as Dave Keto. 
Wonderful. And before we go, we're going to ask just one question. Sure. The question I have for you today is, if someone was going to adapt to a healthier and better lifestyle, what one bit of advice would you give them? Do whatever you need to that brings your insulin lower. Wonderful. Dave, so good to have you on. Thank Thanks you so much, much for having me. Thank you. Thank you.